In example six, we're looking at uh, two independent exponential variables. Each one has mean three, and we want to find the density function of y1 plus y2. So uh, let me remind you of how this works. First, we got to know the uh, moment generating function for an exponential function, for an exponential variable, since uh, everything here is based on moment generating functions. So m sub yi, the individual ones, um, I'm going to look up my uh, moment generating function for the uh, exponential variable on my chart. And that's uh, earlier on in this lecture. If you scroll back uh, in this lecture, you'll see moment generating functions for continuous variables. And so the one for the exponential function is it's 1 minus beta t to the negative 1. But in this case, our mean is given at beta equals 3. So it's 1 minus 3t to the negative 1. And so we're going to use that when we find the moment generating function for u. That's the moment generating function for y1 plus y2. And the whole point of moment generating functions, or one of the very useful properties that they have, is that it converts addition into multiplication. So m sub y2 of t, time, or m sub y1 times m sub y2, that's 1 minus 3t to the negative 1 times 1 minus 3t to the negative 1. And so we just get 1 minus 3t to the negative 2. And again, I'm going to look back at my chart and say, do I recognize this as the moment generating function for any of my known distributions? And if you look back at the chart, you'll see that the gamma distribution um, does have a moment generating function, uh, the gamma distribution. The gamma distribution does have a moment generating function of 1 minus beta t to the negative alpha. So what I have here is a gamma distribution with alpha is 2 and beta is 3. And so I can find the density function now as the density function from the gamma distribution. So here's the density function for the gamma distribution. I learned this uh, way back in one of the earlier videos on the gamma distribution, so you can look this up if you don't remember it. It's u to the alpha minus 1 times uh, e to the negative u over beta divided by beta to the alpha times gamma of alpha. So in this case, uh, u to the alpha minus 1, now, well, alpha is 2. So this is just u to the 1 times e to the negative u over 3. Beta to the alpha is 3 squared. And gamma of alpha is gamma of 2. Gamma of 2, remember, is 2 minus 1 factorial. So 1 factorial is just going to be 1. That's, uh, it's easy to work out gamma of a whole number because it's related to the factorial function. So let me simplify that. f sub u of u is uh, u e to the negative u over 3 divided by 3 squared is 9. Oh, and my range for gamma distribution is u goes from 0 to infinity. So I found my density function for u. And that's it. Let me uh, review the steps there. Uh, I was given that we had exponential variables. So the first thing I did was look up the moment generating function for the exponential variable on the chart which is 1 minus, well, it was beta t in general, but beta is the mean of the exponential distribution, so that's 3 in this case. We were given that it was 3. And for u, u is y1 plus y2. So if I want to calculate its moment generating function, uh, it converts addition into multiplication using the fact that we have independent variables there. So I multiply together two copies of 1 minus 3t to the negative 1, and I get 1 minus 3t to the negative 2. Now I go back and look at the chart, and uh, I'm looking at my continuous distributions, and I'm saying, do I recognize, um, do I recognize this moment generating function? And I say, yes, this is the MGF, uh, the moment generating function, 
for the gamma distribution. Because the moment generating function for the gamma distribution has this form, 1 minus beta t to the negative alpha. So I just recognize that this is the right thing with alpha equals 2 and beta equals 3. So I know I've got a gamma distribution, and I know my formula for a gamma distribution, my density function for a gamma distribution, is just given by this. Uh, this comes from our earlier lecture on the gamma distribution. So you can go back and look that up if this formula seemed to come out of left field. And then I plugged in my alphas and my betas, alphas and betas. Uh, gamma function, remember the gamma of n is just n minus 1 factorial if n is a whole number. So gamma of 2 is just 1 factorial, which is just 1. And so I just simplified everything here and I got down to u e to the minus u over 3, um, di all divided by 9, and that's uh, my range for the gamma distribution is going from 0 to infinity. So that wraps up our lecture on moment generating functions. It was kind of a long one. I really appreciate it if you stuck with me through all that. And that wraps up this uh, sort of uh, three lecture series on finding distributions of functions of random variables. We had one on distribution functions, one on transformations, and now this last one on moment generating functions. Next up we're going to talk about order statistics, so I hope you'll stay tuned for that. Uh, this is part of the larger series of probability lectures here on educator.com, and I, as always, am your host, Will Murray. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye.